Hi everyone. So a few days back, I introduced uh, this uh, case study regarding the rules of the road application at C. And uh, I asked you guys to provide me with comments on uh, what you think should have happened. And in specifically, I asked you to answer three questions. So today I'll uh, present my analysis. And just for the benefit of uh, everyone, I'll again recap the case study and then I'll go about explaining what I think should have happened and how the rules of the road should have been applied. So the case study here, there were two ships. One was the blue ship, which was a bulk carrier that was uh, heading uh, 045 degrees true. Uh, so about northeast at about nine knots in speed. And there was another vessel, which is the orange uh, colored vessel that was on a container ship. Uh, which was about five miles away from your vessel and it was on your port bow and it was making a speed of about uh, 19 knots and the CPA or the closest point of approach between the two vessels was of course 0.3 nautical miles. Now at this stage you believe uh, on the bulk carrier that uh, the closest point of approach is too close uh, for comfort so 0.3 nautical miles was not enough so what you do at 10.15 uh, when the vessel is three miles away is that you ask the vessel and you call the container ship on the VHF to ask about its intentions. And the watchkeeper on the container ship says he will pass ahead of you, but you must ask him to, but you ask him to alter course to pass astern of you. So instead of passing ahead of you, you ask the uh, bulk, uh, the container vessel to pass astern of you. Now, of course, uh, the container vessel continues. Uh, maybe the container vessel was very confident that they will pass ahead of you. So at 10.20, you call again. And you ask uh, or you insist rather and tell the container ship to alter course to starboard. Now, the watchkeeper on the container ship realizes that uh, maybe it's too close for comfort. So he changes his mind and begins altering course to starboard. However, a few minutes later, the ships collide. Uh, although the container vessel does start to alter course to starboard, uh, it does collide with your vessel. All right, so this was the case study. And then I asked you guys three questions, of course. I asked you what caused the collision, uh, what was a safe CPA, and did the VHF conversation improve the situation? Now, of course, here I'll provide you uh, my analysis of the situation. So firstly, what caused the collision? So according to me here, uh, uh, you may say that it was the fault of the container ship uh, that uh, did not alter the course in good time. Now here you may see that, uh, and you will see rather not you may, but you will see that this is a scenario of a crossing situation. So this is a crossing situation. You have uh, the container vessel that was the giveaway vessel and you on the brew vessel, are the of course the stand on vessel right so of course uh, this is how you are looking at the situation now considering that uh, the container vessel was the giveaway vessel the container vessel rather trying to pass ahead of you should have altered course to starboard and passed astern of you and you should have being the stand on vessel maintained your course and speed now this is what ideally should have happened Correct. Now what happens here is that uh, there are a few things here uh, which led to the collision. So the first thing is that uh, uh, the vessels started to realize that they are passing very close only when they were five miles away. And this uh, according to me is uh, not a good sign. Why it's not a good sign is because here we are assuming there are no other ships in the vicinity. It's not a narrow channel. It's not a traffic separation scheme. It's open sea. We don't know about any other ships. Considering all that, uh, five miles I think is too less now of course someone may argue that five miles is good enough for me if it's open sea I would like to take action as early as possible and not wait till the last minute so even if it's eight miles I will take the action I will I will not wait for the vessel to get close to five miles because if it's open sea I've got sufficient sea room um, I will take early and substantial action to make sure the other vessel knows about my intention all right so naturally uh, this is a crossing situation as per rule 15 because here when two power driven vessels are crossing so as to involve risk of collision the vessel which has the other on her own starboard side shall keep out of the way and shall if the circumstances of the case admit avoid crossing ahead of the other vessel so again here you can see that the container ship as per rule 15 should have avoided 
crossing ahead of the other vessel so definitely the container ship was at fault here the container ship being a giveaway vessel should have taken action should have taken earlier action but it should have altered course to starboard and passed a stern of your vessel as per rule 16 which is action by giveaway vessel every vessel which is directed to keep out of the way of another vessel shall so far as possible take early and substantial action to keep well clear now of course rule number 16 gives you or gives the giveaway vessel that allowance that so far as possible if it's possible take early and substantial action to keep well clear now according to me here this is open sea because we don't have any other information about it being a narrow channel or a traffic separation scheme or other ships being in the vicinity so i will suggest that the container ship should have taken early and substantial action to keep well clear all right however rule number 17 says that although the stand on vessel should keep her course and speed however she should take action to avoid collision by her maneuver alone as soon as it becomes apparent to her that the vessel required to keep out of the way which is the stand the giveaway vessel is not taking appropriate action in compliance with these rules so i would also say that the bulk carrier or that is your ship should have realized at about 10 15 itself that the container ship is not taking action as it should it should have either altered course to starboard it should have avoided cost crossing ahead of you so at 10 15 itself based on this scenario i would have started making a broad alteration of course to starboard not to port because i would have expected that the container ship will either cross ahead of me or it will alter course to starboard and pass astern of me i would have started altering course to starboard uh, if required i would have gone on a parallel course or i would have taken a complete 360 degree turn and passed a stern of the container vessel if the container vessel had maintained its course and speed or if it had altered course to starboard i would anyway be safe if i had altered course to starboard but i would have taken earlier action as well i believe that the main cause of collision was firstly that the container ship was at fault being a giveaway vessel it made two mistakes it did not alter course to starboard and the second one was it tried to uh, cross ahead of the uh, your ship bulk carrier the second mistake was by both vessels where both vessels realized it it was too late to take action they should have taken action much earlier than what they did what was a safe cpa now of course a cpa our closest point of approach is decided by the master the master decides the closest point of approach right and every master may have its their own requirements and also the requirements changes based on the situation so the cpa what the cpa you may have at open sea will be much larger than the cpa you will have in narrow channels or congested waters or traffic separation schemes uh, where there is more traffic now again we are assuming that this is uh, open waters this is open seas they have sufficient cpa so 0.3 nautical miles is of course not enough when you have open waters sufficient sea room um, you must maintain a adequate cpa now i will not allot a value to it i will not say the cpa should have been 0.6 miles or one mile or two mile because like i said it depends on the circumstances and conditions the speed of the vessel the traffic density but the bigger the cpa the better it is if you have the sea room available so even ideally even in narrow channels and traffic separation schemes all those the cpa is much lesser it's about 0.6 miles or between 0.6 to one mile and again it depends on the master i should not be allotting a number to it but uh, when you realize that uh, the cp is 0.3 miles it is not enough whether it's open channels uh, open sea water or whether it's narrow channels or it's traffic separation schemes 0.3 is very less uh, considering you can see the speed of one vessel was 19 knots and it was quite fast 19 knots is quite fast as well all right so the cp should have been more ideally especially because it was open sea and uh, cp should have been as much as possible that's the answer cp should have been more the third question was did the vhf conversation improve the situation now according to me the vhf conversation uh, did not improve the situation in fact it made it worse and that is why um, in many books in many places and by practices of good seamanship it is often discouraged to use the vhf to avoid collision or to decide on an action to avoid collision all right so there are many reasons for it of course the one of the reasons is that you may identify the incorrect vessel the second reason is that there could be communication issues sometimes there could be language barriers it could be a, a, a problem in understanding uh, the interpretation of the action to be taken so the best way is always to uh, show your intention by your action alone so ideally if i was the container ship or i was the bulk carrier 
I would not have used the VHF. I would have definitely stuck to the rules of the road. I would have shown my intention by my action alone, whether it was a broad alteration close to starboard or whether it would have been reduction in speed. Now, considering you didn't have enough time for a reduction in speed, five miles is not good enough. If you give engine room notice, they need some time to reduce speed, especially because if you are not, the engines are not on short notice. So here, broad alteration, of course, would have been the best action to improve the situation not a VHF conversation. I'm anyway not a big fan of VHF conversations unless it's uh, unless of course it's open sea. There are not many ships around and it's very clear. And nowadays with AIS, you can identify ships very clearly here. Of course, uh, I'm assuming here this was open sea. There are only two ships involved. They should have uh, contacted by VHF. They should have uh, communicated the intention well enough to avoid the collision. But you can see that uh, the main problem, like I told you, is uh, five miles distance. Five miles distance, then three miles distance is too less for any of the vessels to communicate over the VHF, decide on the action or avoid any confusion. Uh, they should have taken early and substantial action and they should have uh, conveyed their intention by action alone. So ideally, the container ship should have been uh, responsible. Uh, they should have being a give a vessel alter course to starboard. And if I was on the bulk carrier, the blue vessel, I would have realized it much earlier that the container ship is not taking action. I would have started making a broad alteration of course to starboard, started going parallel with the other vessel if the other vessel is not taking action and or else I would have taken a round turn and passed a stern of the other vessel. All right, so that is my analysis uh, and this is how I would have applied the rules of the road. So we have rule 15, 16, 17 and these are the rules uh, tomorrow. If you are asked in the exam uh, of a similar situation, these are the rules you have to quote. You not only have to um, give or allot responsibility to the giveaway vessel, but you also have to identify that the stand on vessel also has responsibilities as per rule number 17. So uh, become familiar with these three rules, understand these rules, understand the phrases, the key words like so far as practicable. Remember, the giveaway vessel has the alliance with so far as practicable. So if it's only practicable, it will take early and substantial action. So you have to um, notice these phrases and these keywords uh, to make sure that uh, you convey to the examiner, you convey to the surveyor or even at practical application at sea that you understand the rules of the road deeply. All right. So I'll keep I'll keep this video short now. I'll uh, stop this video and let me know through your comments and feedback. Uh, whether you agree or disagree with me. Bye for now and all the best with your studies, guys.